everyone hi how are you all doing so yes so that we are here together i'm sure you all are ready to learn something very interesting so here i am going to take ahead with you some very interesting facts related to flowers so i hope you all are ready to learn with me about those amazing facts so let's get started quickly but first of all you need to know who am i isn't it you are also looking forward to know the answer for it isn't it so here it's me of course my name is zufa and here i am the master teacher for science and i just love the subject biology and with this you know about your teacher so let's get started with the topic for today but before that i have a question for you do you all really like flowers well yes most of us do really like flowers so you can tell me which one is your favorite flower it we have so many variety of flowers right you could love any one of them now in general in general if you are liking flowers i have some facts to share with you okay so here comes the first fact you must have heard about this flower named neela kuranji right so this particular flower blooms after every 12 years and if i ask you can you guess the color of this flower well yes that becomes quite obvious because of this name itself which says neela and we all know the meaning of neela isn't it that's blue in color so with that fact we are going to go ahead and we will be learning something more about that flower so here what exactly do we use flower for we do encounter flowers in our everyday life right so what do we use the flowers for we use it for various different reasons right we are using flowers to make our floral jewelries not only this if there is someone's birthday any auspicious occasion right then also we are using flowers but wait a minute biologically speaking that's not what flowers are made for right flowers are the reproductive part present in the plant right and we need to know about that process so i'm going to introduce you to this word which is pollination when we learn about flowers we must also learn about this term which is pollination so be with me so that we can learn something more about this term and you know what to learn more about pollination first of all we need to understand about the different parts present in a flower so here is a flower which you all can see right so here is the first part which is stigma so stigma as i'm going to mark it here fine so you all can see the stigma portion over here right at the top this is a very sticky region okay and followed by stigma there is the second part which is style style is this region this long tubular region which you see that's called as style and now this style is followed by another region which is little swelled up right and this is known as ovaries so now coming together if we are going to see all those three parts together if we see style stigma and ovary together what are we going to get let's see so stigma plus the style adding ovaries to it we get the female reproductive part and that is called as the pistil so pistil is adding stigma style and ovary together let's move ahead okay because we have got more interesting parts present in our flower so we all can see these swollen structures right those orange colored swollen structures they are called as anther and this anther is going to have a very important thing present in it and they are the pollen grains 
so the pollen grains which leads to pollination process they are present here in the anther itself now if you notice that anther that is attached to a very long tube like structure right this structure over here this is filament so going ahead let's see this long tube like structure is called as the filament now what do we call the anther and the filament together do we have a name for this also so let's go ahead and let's see so if you are going to join the anther and the filament together we get another part and that is the male reproductive part present in a flower and that is the stamen so stamen is the anther and the filament put together now that we know what a pistil and a, what a stamen really means let's go ahead and let's try to see the different parts present in a flower so you see here stigma style and ovary as i told you do you remember what do we call these three together do you remember that yes you are right they are together called as pistil and the anther in, and the filament they are together called as stamen but yes there are other parts also which are present in our flower so we will have a quick look at that too so here we can see thalamus sepal and petal let's go one by one so the thalamus is actually this region which you can see the swelled up region which is the base of the flower that is thalamus now if you see sepal sepal is this green leaf like structure and over here this is the petal now as we all know petal is something which is the most attractive part which is present in a flower and yes of course it attracts insects toward itself and yes some of the flowers have got really nice smell which is present in the petals so with that come on let's go ahead i have a question for all of you sigma style and ovary makes which one of the following for this question i'm going to give you two options so what are those options the first one is a pistil and the second one is b stamen so it's time for you to quickly tell me the answer what should be the correct answer over here if we are going to mix sigma style and ovary if you're going to take all these three parts together the answer will be option a pistil because all these three parts will make the female reproductive part of a flower okay i hope this is clear to you all coming to the second question stamen is what option a it is ovary plus the style or option b it is anther and filament put together so what will be the answer here yes you all are right the correct answer is option b because stamen is as i have already told you the male reproductive part of a flower it will be made when anther and filament they come together okay so these two are very important questions related to this topic let's see you all can see these structures right the brown swelled up structures they are the anthers okay and what are the anthers going to contain in them i have already told you the anthers have pollen grains or pollens present in them so these anthers when they get matured enough they burst open releasing all the pollen outside so let's see how that is done so you can see a clear picture of the anthers along with the filament these are structures over here they are the anthers okay these all of them they are anthers and this long tube like structure that is supporting the anther lobes that is the filament so with that you know what is the major purpose of this anther and the stigma which we are talking about as anther will open up it will release the pollen grains now those pollen grains they have to reach to the stigma okay so these pollen grains which will come out of the anther they will be reaching the stigma so that the process of pollination may happen now 
I have made the arrow in this direction. Suppose if I'm going to make an arrow like this, is this right? From stigma to anther, is this right? No. So you have to be careful when you are representing all these things. It will always be in the direction of anther towards the stigma. Okay. So with this, let's go ahead. Once the pollen grain is released, it will land on the stigma. Okay. So as soon as the pollen grain lands on the stigma, you can see that it will make its way downwards into the style, right? Making a pollen tube. The whole idea here is that this pollen grain has to reach till the ovary part. Okay, it must reach towards the ovary so that the process of fertilization may happen. Okay, so let's go ahead. You can see it over here. The pollen grains, they are making the tube inside to reach the ovaries. And when they reach inside the ovary, the process of fertilization will happen. So now what is going to happen over here? This flower will change into a fruit. Okay. So we all know that flowers, they change into fruit. And the fruits are having the seeds inside. And we all know that seeds lead to the formation of new plants. Right. So here you can see as the process of fertilization completes, the flowers change into the fruits and then the fruits are going to have the seeds inside. OK, so with this, we do learn about the process of pollination. But yes, I will be sharing some interesting facts with you. So you all like chocolates, isn't it? You all like chocolates. So there is a variety of flower called as the chocolate cosmos. And obviously, it has got its name because of the scent that it is having. Yes, you all are right. It is going to have chocolate smell. And that's how it has got its name. But wait, I have some more interesting facts to share with you. There's an entire language. You're right. Entire language made out of these flowers. And that is called as floriography. That is because, let me tell you why. Because Every flower has its own meaning. And to understand that, we have one complete language dedicated to flowers. All interesting facts, isn't it? There's one more. As you can see here, the world's oldest flower bloomed, that is 125 million years ago. And that was discovered back in 2002, which happened in China. Okay, all amazing facts. I know that for sure. There is one more. When you were telling me, ma'am, I like this flower. Ma'am, lily is my favorite. Roses. Roses are very common, right? And we all like roses. Now here, obviously, they are very attractive. They are found in so many colors. But yes, there is one very important thing. Their fragrance, which attracts all of us. So the roses have got very small microscopic perfume glands and where are they present they are present on the petal itself right that's how when you're going to smell them you will feel that nice fragrance okay so those were some amazing facts and some learning related to flowers you want to learn more of these things then for that this is the place for you there is oda class and where are you going to find oda class Obviously, you can find it, Oda class in the Play Store. Okay, so when you open the Play Store, you can reach, you can type there Oda class. What you need to do is you need to download Oda class from the Play Store itself. And you know what? When you attend the classes, you will also be getting something in return. That's amazing, isn't it? What will you get in return? You will be getting some coin rewards for yourself. Okay, that's very interesting, of course. So you will be learning and along with learning, you will be collecting your rewards too. Now here, that's step one. You can download the Oda app from the Play Store itself. And this is how it is going to look like. When you enter the app, this is how it is going to look like. 
So you can enter into any of those free sessions. And yes, of course, you can collect your coins also. Now, those coins which I was talking about, they are completely redeemable. What is the meaning of that? You go to Oda Mall in the Oda app. You have lots of gifts there waiting for you, right? So you collect the coins. You can claim all these gifts for yourself. So quickly, it's time for you to download the app now and get yourself enrolled in the Oda class right now. And yes, do not forget that you also have to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. And yes, bye-bye.